After our enjoyable weekend at Lake Fairview, the spreader caps arrived to repair not working. I installed them as Catalina Direct instructs using stainless steel serving wire, not copper electrical wire as in the old installation. This should last a while. I went ahead and did both caps. With those repairs made, we headed out to St. Petersburg for what we expected to be a beautiful 4th of July long weekend of sailing. We arrived at Fort DeSoto boat ramp on July 2nd and began setting up the boat. We raised the mast and began loading provisions while I worked on the boom and the sails. And that's where the sailing part of the weekend ended. On the last outing, when the spreader tip broke, I had run forward to drop the sails. I'd found a small semicircular piece of metal that I assumed was the broken tip laying on the foredeck. While placing the boom gooseneck into the mast slot, I saw that one of the cast loops that the bolt is installed in was broken, and it was missing. That missing piece is what I had found on the foredeck. The gooseneck was broken and our sailing weekend was over before we were even in the water. Dale and I talked it over. We already had more than two hours invested in setting up the boat, and it would take about that long again to get it road ready. We decided just to put it in the water and motor around the weekend anyway. We splashed the boat bare pulled. We found a place nearby to anchor and settled in for the night. The next morning, we had breakfast at anchor. The wind seemed to have picked up, but the local and marine forecast hadn't changed. Winds out of the west-northwest between 10 and 15. Now this would be my second lesson that forecasters do not have crystal balls. The reality was quite different, as we soon learned. I misquote Churchill, saying, Never have so many been paid so much to be so wrong so often. Our exit through Bunce's Pass was, well... Exciting? <laughs> the waves seemed larger but manageable. They were very challenging at the end of the channel, as the pass becomes much shallower, which amplifies the waves. I grew concerned briefly, but the waves were right on the bow, and the boat handled them fine, even if we did get covered in spray in the cockpit. You see, Bunce's Pass and Passagrill are shortcuts from Tampa Bay through Pinellas County out to the Gulf. Bunce's Pass, however, has a bridge next to the Fort DeSoto boat ramp that only has about 25 feet of clearance. And this sailboat isn't going under that. So we cannot go back through to Tampa Bay. We have to go out to the Gulf. Which is fine, because once clear of Bunce's Pass, it's only about a mile north to the Passagrill Inlet, and then about another mile into the protected waters. But at the very end of Bunce's Pass, like I had said, it gets very shallow. I would say between four and six feet shallow. And then amplified the shallowness with the waves. And uh, I'm certain that we bumped that bottom at least twice. The ride up was very nice, if a bit rolly. And the turn east did give us following seas. Once in to the safety of Grill, we worked our way up to the wharf restaurant. Docked there and chilled for a while. Long story short, too late, right? We motored around Paso Grill in Boca Ciega. We took the girls on a cruise and went swimming. We anchored for the night in Paso Grill Anchorage, and then on Saturday night in front of Boca Ciega Anchorage, because it was a good spot to see all the fireworks. It was also more sheltered from that west wind. Saturday afternoon, which was July 4th, Dale and Jai removed the truck and the trailer from Fort DeSoto up to the Gandy boat ramp. It's a nice boat ramp, large, you can park there overnight. It's on the Tampa Peninsula though. We didn't want to go back out into the Gulf as the wind had not lessened much and it was still out of the West. Well, that also meant that I would be spending my Sunday on a four and a half hour trip motoring across Tampa Bay. It was a nice time, and the Gandhi ramp is a fine ramp. But we later found another ramp that's much closer. I'll show you that one later. So this has pretty much been it for about four hours. Just riding along. It's actually, the, the bay has gotten much quieter. 
there's no waves. There is that current and the headwind has died for the moment. Been a long hot ride. Alright, I'm at the boat ramp. Not a bad job single-handed docking if you ask me. I'll start taking stuff apart. Once we got the boat on the trailer and stowed, and then we headed home. Despite all of these circumstances, and not sailing, not working, just motoring around, it was a great weekend. We enjoyed ourselves. We learned a lot about the capabilities of the boat and built confidence in ourselves in some adverse circumstances. And I believe the saying, bad day on the water is better than your best day at work. I'll leave you now with some video that we shot of the fireworks the night of July 4th. It was beautiful and quiet and a fantastic evening. And don't get frustrated. We do eventually learn to hold the phone the other way. There are fireworks 360 degrees around us. We're pointing at Swing, uh, St. Pete Beach. Charter boat, a catch coming up. We stop to watch. We're cruising along at about a knot and a half. Just calm before the storm. Nice flat. off here towards where you see the fireworks. Nice flat bottom, sandy. Our new anchor is going to be perfect. 22 pound delta. Thank you, Becca. Thank you, Becca. You can sleep well tonight, that's for sure. Not like our first night out on Friday. We had that 9 pound delta in about a 20 knot wind. That was uh, a little bit hairy. <laughs> Grand Finale. Later. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button below. You can join us on our adventures by subscribing. It doesn't cost anything. Click on that notification bell and we'll let you know anytime we post new content. Thank you to everyone for all the feedback and the support. Please leave a comment below. And as always, we'd rather be sailing, not working. <laughs>